we're down here at Marina Del Rey. We're going to be testing all the mods that we did to the Sea View and maybe do some exploring of some new small reefs. I also want to see if we can get some sheephead. So I bought some shrimp. We also got some frozen anchovies and sardines and some lures. Weather is really nice out here. Water temp, ah, I don't have a water temp. That's the other thing about the uh, the Fish Pro uh, Fish Finder, the transducer that they install in here. It doesn't have a water temp. Kind of a bummer because I have the same screen on my kayak with a different transducer and it gives me water temp. It could also be because it's mounted inside the hole. That could be why as well. guys well we're out here it's super calm right now i didn't realize this but the sea dew fish pro has the water temperature right there on the screen so that that's fine whatever i said don't worry about it it's on the screen it's 57 degree water temp it's about 65 out right now it's really nice weather really calm no wind right now we'll see how the day changes so let's go explore I'm gonna set up the trolling. So I use this for trolling. It's from Eat My Tackle. It's uh, a Florida-based company. It's really, really, really high-end, high-quality stuff. The pricing actually isn't too bad compared to some of the others that are really high-end. This is, I don't know the model number of this guy. 18W2 speed, RH803. The rod is an Eat My Tackle, seven foot, 30 to 40, RSHD 3040-701. I'm gonna set it up and we're gonna use, we're gonna troll the DTX Minnow, the silver green mackerel, see what we find. All right, I didn't get any bites on the trolling. So we're gonna set up the, uh, Nomad Design Mad Scat. It's more of a casting. If you're seeing birds, you're seeing action on the surface, you can throw it like you've got a real live bait. So we're gonna try that. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a little silver green mackerel. And that is the uh, model. Here's the spinning rod. This is also Eat My Tackle. This is a 70-20-30-RS2035-701MH one to one and a half ounce and it's got a 15 pound braid i gotta upsize my clip I had the smaller clip on because yesterday i was in cabrillo i'll roll a clip now that it was we're out here at cabrillo today in long beach or near Long Beach, we're on the kayak, and I forgot my Mirage Drive, but I do have this silly little trolling setup, which I already hate, so we'll see how the day goes. We're gonna try for halibut. I don't have any fresh bait. We're gonna try frozen and lures. I met up with some guys from Fresh and Salty, and they said that they would give me some live bait, but at this point with no Mirage Drive, we're just gonna try this stupid little trolling setup and see what we come up with. So stay tuned. Dude, I didn't even bring my freaking, I didn't even bring my drive. You didn't bring your drive? No. Nope. Oh good, I'm hoping your battery lasts. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just catch up with you guys next time. Yeah. The out behind you, I look at that photo, dude. That is bitching, dude. <laughs> I know. With, with that dropping down. Fuck what the hell, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna come back out here on Thursday. I don't know what you guys are doing. Yeah. Uh, I don't have no plan yet. I'll let you know. Just uh, message me. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. So we're going to go to the bait bar. you want to go get bait? Yeah, I'm going to just chill. I'll catch you up on the next time. I'm just going to chill here because it's a stupid f***ing trolling motor. I can't stand yeah, I'll, it. I'll, I'll find you. Yeah, yeah. Okay.
Calico. You that guy. Get to go measure. It's 12. We're gonna let him go. All right, well, I'm calling it for the day. Landed one fish, a big halibut that ripped my rig apart. We got something that looked like sand dab, but I think it was a baby halibut. But I never ended up meeting up with Fresh and Salty at the bait barge because I didn't bring my garage drive. And I have this silly little trolling motor set up. It was a trial run and I didn't know how it would go. Can't say I'm in love with it. My knee was hurting me last time I was out pedaling. So I wanted to see if this was a viable solution. I don't know yet. We'll see. Not a whole lot of action today. Nonetheless, it was a great day on the water. It was kind of a, so I was going for, uh, I was throwing swim baits for halibut with this. That's why I had the smaller one on there. I got five really small halibut. I almost thought they were sand dabs. And uh, so I took them back and the GoPro wasn't working. So I didn't catch any of that on film. I caught a calico which was nice, it was 12 inches. I lost three rigs with flashers and bounce balls trying to go for halibut. The uh, kelp over there, it just sneaks up on you. And so I lost all those, but we're out here today. So we're gonna set this one up for more of a lure dropping fall style lure. So if I find something on the screen, I can drop it down and we'll see what we get. This is a Akuma P PCH Custom. It is a 70, two, uh, 20 to 50 PCH C 701H. This is a Daiwa Alexa HD 400 5.1 model. Model is 400 PWR-P and it's got 50 pound braid. All right, this one is uh, like a blue pink, 100 gram for the treble. One of the rigs I lost yesterday was, it got snagged on the reef and I didn't retie. That was my, my bad. It just came off. So always remember to retie. I would retie every time you go out. Just why not? It's, it's a couple minutes of not losing your shit or, or a fish. I like the Palomar knot. It's one of the stronger of the knots, really. It's super easy to do. Some of these knots out there are just too complicated for me. I, all right, got her on. Go find some fish. All right, we're just heading over a wreck right now. It's no, it's a known wreck. It's a known fishing spot. I use Navionics a lot of the time to see structure underneath the water. It's a known spot. I'll put the uh, coordinates down below. You guys can go check it out for yourself. Yeah, we're getting into it now. Rockfish season isn't open yet, but I don't know. We'll see what we can come into. Shit, there's birds over there going crazy. I don't know if they're actually feeding off anything, but it wouldn't hurt for me to throw the lure. Parking a few things under there. I think they're just flying around. I don't know what they're doing. I don't see them feeding though. Well, let's go back to the wrecked. All right, we're gonna change it out to uh, Nomad Squid Treks. 110 size. Gotta get back over on the spot. All right, I see stuff. So regarding the mods, I've noticed the battery staying at 13 something volts when I'm sitting here at rest fishing. So I'm really happy with that storage, that extra storage of battery. The bilge pumps will test when we clean the jet ski. The port I've already used uh, for jump starting and charging, I've already used it for charging and I'm super happy with that. 
I have used the lithium batteries for jumping my own personal vehicles, so I know it works. Hopefully I don't have to use it here. Bumpers, I used them at the dock when we got here. I tied it up at the dock and it was no problem. So super happy with everything. Now I can come out here and fish and not have to worry too much. I'm getting bites on the lures, but it's been a couple hours now moving from reef to reef. None landed. So we're gonna switch it up and go for some sheephead. I just bought a half pound, not jumbo, but large or extra large shrimp. And I've got just basically a rock cod rig, two hooks, and the biggest weight I had was only two ounces, but it's what I got. about 65 feet of water and I'm marking some things under there not a lot of activity I don't know if you can see this but the uh, Coast Guard is over there by that boat not sure if they're training from my view it looks like they're getting closer to us almost like they are following them in yeah they actually have the uh, crane going up so I wonder if they're rescuing somebody actually that might be the uh, lifeguard boat, we'll see, but they might be just training. Yeah, it says lifeguard on the side, so they're just training. Pretty cool though. Never seen the Coast Guard that close to me. Here's the mount that I made. I really like it. This is exactly how I'm using it today. Got the wire coming down and the battery just sitting here. It's working really well. It's swivelable and lockable and extendable. Well guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Only had a couple hours to spend out here, mostly to test the sea dew and see if we can get some fish. The sheephead weren't biting. I got a lot of bites on the red crab hookup bait. I got a lot of bites on the DTX minnow. Got a couple bites on some lures. We kept trying to go from reef to reef. Got nothing to show you, so we'll take you on the next one. We'll have more time. All right, so I just finished flushing out the engine. We'll test the uh, bilge pump now. Let me take all those off. So first we'll test the automatic. Might take a while to fill up. And it's gonna come out right here. Even this much water, you should feel it on the water. Your back end starts sitting down real low. There you go. So the auto works. Let's shut the auto off and then we'll turn the emergency one on. There you go. Get it a little more full. Backup one. Yeah, look at that. So that is a success. Open up to empty this. <laughs> Let that run for a little bit. So here's part of the cleaning. I didn't show you the engine flush, but you can look that up online. Here's what I like to do is, even though there's no salt on here, it's not gonna harm anything to actually put the salt preventative liquid in here and have it run out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. This is a gallon. I bought it on Amazon. I suggest buying the gallon. I'll leave everything down below because you will use a lot of it. So if you look here, every connector is actually in a closed position. All these connectors are water resistant. This one for your swivel chair thing is not. So when I do salt away this and I put water in there, I'm actually gonna blow it out with air and put dielectric grease in there so that when I do keep making connections, this doesn't corrode out. Because if you notice, if you're a kayaker or 
whatever if you keep making connections it will corrode so that's the plan and I don't care how well your sea dew is sealed you're gonna get water in here I don't care where you're fishing that's all I'm gonna do let that sit for a sec being this is how I lay out my gear when I come back you got to get everything I'm telling you even the zippers will start getting salt in between and you're gonna have a problem opening that zipper so you got to get everything make sure all of your electronics are out of there but it will dry and guess what when that blue goes away you have to refill it again be mindful of that even my hat I didn't even mean for this thing to be a lucky hat but I just started wearing it when I went fishing and I figured it's already been salt damaged right at the brim so keep wearing it all right need to refill so you guys will go through this it's been uh, a couple minutes since i did the engine no reason to refill this but i wanted that salt away to sit there for a minute because it actually dissolves the salt so i'm going to change this to water only and i'll link this down below it's in amazon i'll let it run out for a minute now we just got water and hit everything that you hit with the salt away. It's all gonna wash down there anyways. Open up this one, right here. Oh, that was tight, there we go. That's all gonna wash away. So this is my strategy. Now this is all desalted inside. I want it to air out, but I'm gonna put the cover back on so I can wash the whole jet. See the mod that I did earlier, previous video? It works, T30. Remember, when the blue goes out, you need to change it. It goes out quicker than you think. So I usually try to do like top to bottom kind of thing, so I don't lose track. Rookie move, water only, gotta start over. Change it out. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, you gotta love your neighbors. Talk to me for about 40 minutes. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this down again with the mixture. I just got this wet right here, and I'm just rubbing the salt away on it everywhere. I like to do the sunny side first. Look at that. Salt away bucket. I've seen some guys, they just salt away, leave it on for a couple minutes, rinse it off, and their jet skis look really good. So I'm not saying this is the best way to do it, I'm just saying this is the way I do it. Rinse off very thoroughly. And what you're doing by rinsing off is actually running the salt out of your craft. So you want to do it really thoroughly. I'll show you the results later, but that hat probably won't have the white salting that it usually does on the brim. I'll show you the results later. That's salt right there. I'll let that sit on there, and I guarantee it'll go away. Here's a little hack. Grab any type of sponge that you have to get the foot wells out. Now this is all salt away water, so you're gonna have to rinse this later. I don't know any other way of doing it, really. 
not terrible to leave the salt away water in there, but I like to get out as much as I can. See what I told you? The salt's gone. The last remark I have to say is salt away your entire trailer because your sea dew is no good without a trailer. So I don't care how you do it, but salt away it. And that is how you keep your sea dew trailer journey in this life alive. The last thing I will leave you with, which you don't need a video, trust me. Here it is. Buy this, Amazon, spray it all over the inside of everything inside under your seat. After everything has dried, before your next ride, because everything's wet right now, spray it over everything, and then use dielectric grease on that seat connector because you're always gonna be removing it. Look it up, dielectric grease. Okay guys, on another note, cold water Okuma, line counter, it's probably the cheaper version, biggest, pile of shit you can ever buy. Tightness all the way, right? Great, right? It would not not let me crank down, and I actually lost both my rigs in Cabrillo. It would not let me crank down, it would just spin. So I think what's happening is if this gets wet, the drag washers, it's a pile of shit. But it's happened with my wife, and I bought her another reel. I bought her a Daiwa, and she's not had an issue with it. My Daiwa 400's out of the box, no problem. This is a pile of shit. I would never buy one. I went on the forums on Google. Just Google cold water, SS, Okuma, tensioning or drag issues, and there's nothing but complaints. It's the biggest pile of shit, waste of your money. Okay, just putting away the jet ski. I don't know if this does it any justice, but look how clean. It looks like it's off the freaking showroom floor it is. Just taking the salt away. I don't know if it comes up on film, but it's shiny. I didn't even use soap. I just used salt away and water. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know, but I'm telling you. Looks brand freaking new, ready to go.